The Federal Reserve had a lot of money out there. It pushed investors into riskier assets. And now we've seen it come back down. The Federal Reserve is tightening funds. You may not see money supply like that out there again. So it may take years for some of these companies to grow into the, the stock multiples that they are the stock levels that they had seen at earlier times. What, what do you think about that thesis? What makes you think we'll get back to those higher multiple, multiple, uh, multiples? Well, we don't need the higher multiples. So we have a five year investment time horizon. Just to give you a sense for our flagship portfolio, our enterprise value, so that's both uh, equity uh, market cap and debt, enterprise market value to EBITDA, so effectively cash flow, uh, is around 69 times. So uh, I know a lot of people say profitless tech. Uh, we are not profitless uh, on balance. We make the assumption that in five years, that number will be close to the market uh, multiple on that basis, which is roughly 16 times. So in our models, and we're starting to publish our models because we really want people to understand this. We just published Zoom. We published uh, Tesla. You can find them on GitHub. Experiment, change the variables we think will move the needle. And you, you can see how, um, how your assumptions might work into our five-year investment time horizon. So we assume a 20% annualized headwind from declining valuations. Uh, and so our return expectation, which is quite substantial right now, uh, is based uh, solely on revenue growth and rising profitability. Now, the narrative you just, um, uh, you just gave, uh, many people cite when they're talking about uh, the tech and te telecom bubble and bust, and we've analyzed our portfolio relative to that as well, because there are memes around that. It's, it's astonishing to us that Zoom's revenue pre, since the, uh, the coronavirus is up roughly sixfold, and the stock is almost down to where it was pre-COVID. Same right. with Teladoc, up fourfold. Uh, Tesla, up threefold, although Tesla has, now that it's in the indexes, it has held up better than the rest of and, our portfolios. But that narrative okay. in 2000, if I could just say, it would suggest that by now we would be seeing negative revenue growth uh, in, in our expectations for the next year and declining gross margins. We are seeing the opposite. We're seeing north of 25% revenue growth. If you're just using consensus estimates, it's 25. And our estimates are much higher because we're focused right on exponential growth trajectories uh, being driven by powerful new technologies. Kathy, one broader question and then a specific stock question. When you think, though, about the last year and you think about your approach, what is the lesson in it? Meaning, I know you have a North Star about specifically these, these stocks that you're talking about, but at some level, you have to look around, and I think your investors would want you to look around and say, okay, I was wrong. What was I wrong about? And if I was wrong, how am I going to change my approach in the future? So uh, if uh, uh, we were wrong on one, uh, one thing, and that was inflation uh, being as sustained as it has been. Supply chain, I can't believe it's taken more than two years, and uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, of course, we couldn't have seen that. So inflation has been a bigger problem, but I think uh, that it has set us up for deflation. Uh, I, I've been listening to your program. I heard Ken Langone talk about being in recession now, Jeremy Siegel saying, we think we're in a recession and we think a really big problem out there is inventories, the likes of the, the increase uh, of which I've never seen this large in my career. And I've been around for 45 years. Uh, and we're talking about the best managed companies in the world. If you're talking about Walmart and Target, they know how to manage supply chains. So if they have problems, we think there are a lot more problems. And then the other thing that's going on is the consumer is railing against these price increases. Consumer sentiment, as measured by the University of Michigan, which we think is the best measure out there, uh, is down to record low levels, below 0809, below 80 and 81. I had just started my career and inflation and interest rates were in the double digits, 15, 20%. And Consumer sentiment today is lower than it was back then. And most interestingly, in the last report, many people think, oh, the, 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 the heavy spenders will, will uh, keep this thing going. Consumer sentiment of the, in the highest income groups is lower than in the, 
the lowest income groups and those the latter group is being you know it, it tormented by food and energy prices which are really a regressive tax increase here to them shepherd smith here thanks for watching cnbc on youtube